Hi everyone, it's Victor speaking and I'm here with Sweaty because the last time we made video with about um, the uh, out of bound planets, then we promised that we would come back and speak about the parallel and the contra parallel aspect, which usually are kind of walk hand in hand uh, with the out of bound planets. So hi Sweaty, how are you? Hi, Victor. I'm good. Thank you. I'm very excited about this video as well. It will be a short one, though, because it's not so much to, to talk about, but uh, it is still important because I personally discovered quite a lot of things about myself when I looked at my chart and the parallel and contra parallel. And thanks to your aspects class, by the way, I never knew about this so far. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, guys, there are five um, major aspects. Uh, so we've got the sextile, the opposition, square, conjunction, and the trine. And that's what they call as the major aspects. However, some astrologers tend to believe that the parallel aspect, as well as the contra-parallel aspect, also can be um, a very influential in the chart. And then they started calling them as major aspect also. So, so we're going to just discover actually how to work with um, those energies. So Tsumete, would you just summarize what a parallel aspect is? Well, um, maybe I will first have to say uh, about um, declinations. So that um, just as a reminder for those who haven't seen the, the Out of Bound Planets video, uh, it's important to know that actually we are looking not at the planetary degrees, which is uh, to be determined by the longitude, but rather we are looking at the planetary declination degree, which is determined by the latitude. And, and uh, when we look at the declination, a planet can be actually uh, at a certain, certain degree on the south or on the north part of the celestial equator. So the declination degrees, when they are uh, the same, no matter whether south or north, then they will form a parallel aspect between two planets. And when we have a, a planet at a certain degree on the south and at the same degree on the north of the celestial equator, then we have contraparallel. Yeah. So I put this diagram on because uh, my program is doing basically this for every individual. You can see in red color this line here, there's the celestial equator. And then you can see actually this uh, graph here, which is uh, indicating the, the path of the sun. And then when the sun achieves this very highest point, then that's when, for instance, that's gonna be the summer solstice. When it reaches this, uh, um, the, the, the crossroad of the equator and the and the, um, this uh, graph here, that's going to be something to do with the uh, autumn. So we're talking about the four seasons here, really. And of course, the sun is sometimes going to be on the top and sometimes it's going to be on the, on the bottom. And what Sweaty was describing here is that sometimes the planets are going to be in the same line. So let's suppose that, for instance, that Venus and um, Venus is here. So somewhere around the same point, for instance, uh, there is gonna be another planet at the bottom, or there is gonna be an, a planet somewhere here in one line with Venus. So that would be something to do with the parallel and the contra-parallel aspect. Now, to make that easier, you can see the declinations here, written up there uh, for each of the planets. Now, you can also do this on astro.com. So let's, for instance, here is a chart. You go on additional tables, and then you will be able to see the declinations written here. Now, you can see the S and the N. That means that the planet is in south or the planet is on north. Let's suppose that we've got sun on 8.35 declination, and we can see that the Mercury is on 8.13 at the moment. And both are sun, uh, sorry, south. So this is what we call as parallel aspect. And it's going to be acting like a conjunction. 
And if you had the same, for instance, between the sun, and let's suppose that the moon is on eight degree as well, that would be a sun, a south, and the north energy, and that would be the contra-parallel aspect. So here, we can see between the sun and the mercury, a, a, a parallel aspect, as I said, it's gonna be acting like a conjunction, and the contra-parallel aspect is gonna be acting like a opposition. So how would you summarize a, a conjunction, uh, Swati? Well, uh, the parallel aspect is actually to be interpreted as a conjunction, and uh, it is not uh, mandatory to have such an aspect in the NATO chart. It can be totally not there, and uh, still it gives the same interpretation and the same feeling, so to say. Uh, the, the native will be experiencing uh, the, the two planets as if they are conjunct. And yeah, uh, yeah. and for, for the contra parallel, it will be interpreted as an opposition. So um, if you, even if you don't have a natal aspect, an opposition between two planets in the chart, if they have a contra parallel aspect, then this means that they will feel like they're opposing each other. Yeah. So opposition is something um, which is about when the two planetary needs are not met and we kind of need to be making a, um, a harmony between those two planets. Yeah. But this is, uh, the, I usually call it as a seesaw energy. So because the seesaw is all about a balance, it's like a Libra energy because, uh, you know, there, is my, there might be a heavier kid, there is a lighter kid, and they're not going to be able to play on that uh, seesaw. So it is extremely important to bring those planets um, into harmony. When we're talking about a conjunction slash parallel aspect, actually we're talking about eventually the planetary uh, energies are going to be fusing. Conjunction yeah. can be either good or bad, depending on the qualities of the planets. So let's say uh, Mars and the Sun energy might be working out just greatly. And the reason being is because both by nature, hot and dry planets. For instance, the other pair which could work out could be Venus and Moon because both of them are cold and wet energy. Or Mercury and Saturn, even Saturn is a malefic planet, but both have got more about cold and dry energy. Now, Jupiter has no pair when it comes to their uh, um, like qualities. So we cannot really pair up Jupiter with anyone, but Jupiter is also a hot and wet energy. So he has got this ability to be able to get on with hot quality planets as well as with uh, wet quality planets as well. So that's the reason why he's the most benefit planet because he can get on almost with every single planet apart from Mercury, they have got a little bit of a problem with each other, but overall he is very, very um, open to anyone's uh, energies. So the parallel aspect is more about uniting those energies and then making the best out of them. Now we brought up um, Sweaty's uh, chart because if I'm not mistaken, Sweaty, you've got quite a few mm -hmm. parallel and contra parallel aspects, yes. right? Yeah, one contra parallel and three parallels. So when we look at it, what's your contra parallel? It's moon Uranus. So when we look at a uh, moon, moon is on 19.1 and then Uranus is 18.52. Very important, we don't give a more than half a degree orb here. So this is within half a degree, so that's definitely a contra parallel aspect. Yeah. No, and it is acting I, like the moon and the Uranus were opposing each other. When yeah. we go back onto her chart, we can see that the moon is here, Uranus is there, there is no opposition going on, but by declination, actually they are acting like um, opposition. So Uranus is all about my individuality. Moon is about, let's say, having a child. Or that moon is about teaching uh, esoteric knowledges, ninth house, and the Uranus rebellious energy says, no, that's not me, <laughs> right? 
Yeah. How do you so think right. the Uranus moon appears in your life? Um, yeah, and it, it, it's all about, um, it's actually working as an opposition in my life. And I have been wondering why this is happening. I, I could feel it like I, I, I'm always on the seesaw of personal relationships and looking for some kind of excitement, always wanting some change and like being easily bored with family life and all I, I have always said, I don't understand why I have this moon in cancer and I hate it being domesticated. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really so, something was going on, which I couldn't see. And then I realized I have this contra parallel aspect and it's so, it's saying so much about this energy. It's like, um, I, I can't, can't find the balance. So as, as you gave a great example with this CISO, maybe a third person will always make the disease so more even. You, you used to explain this in, in our aspects class with uh, a very skinny guy and a very big guy being on the two sides of the seesaw. And actually the solution would be to always welcome someone who, who has to add up additional kilos to the skinny guy. So when you feel that you're out of balance and have this opposition, you can just welcome someone else, a third party to support you. But exactly. Yeah, it's it, and it's working yeah it's so great too. and then 20 has got three uh parallel aspect as well we're only gonna be demonstrating one here yeah. um just gonna pluto. make a short video so which one did you choose let's take venus pluto because i have a, an opposition in the nato chart and i have a conjunction i have a parallel here okay so we can see that pluto is on 754 north and then we've got Venus and 742 North. And this is what we call as a parallel aspect. So it like, acts like a conjunction. Yeah. However, in her chart, actually what we can see here is it's a beautiful opposition. Now, <laughs> when there is a, an aspect formed uh, by the uh, longitude of the planet as well, it is even more emphasized in the chart. Uh, and uh, sometimes, because one is acting like a conjunction, the other one is acting like an opposition, sometimes she can be extremely good with those energies, so she can have very good intense type of uh, a, a very great um, energies with Pluto and uh, Venus, maybe intense feelings, or she can express her feminine energies very strongly. And sometimes, most probably, the other end of the scale is going to be questioning her self-worth or questioning her own beauty and, and so forth. Yeah. So because Venus is, for instance, in the sign of Aries, sometimes she can be extremely feminine and sometimes she can act like a tomboy. <laughs> so, <laughs> because Aries, Venus tends to be very masculine at some point. So someone who, is, who knows how to direct things in life. So how do you think this Pluto um, Venus energy plays out in your life? Well, uh, it's everybody telling me uh, I am worth it. I am even, you know, there are many people telling me I have this seductive um, somehow, you know, they, they feel my energy as being very seductive. And when they tell me that, I, I really don't understand it. I, I just can't get in touch with it so much. It, it's just something that radiates out of me, but I don't really realize it. It's, it's on a very subconscious level. And also when it comes to relationships, because Venus also is relationships, um, it's, I, I, I don't want to have any superficial relationships at all. If it's all or nothing. It's either I have a very deep, sensual relationship with someone um, or I, I don't want the relationship at all in my life. It's a very extreme um, <laughs> thing, but it, it's like this. If I don't feel the deep connection with the person, I just, I just can't do it. It's not very possible. Very Plutonian, all or nothing, yep. extremes. Those are the major keywords. Yeah. So guys, it was just a very short um, video about the parallel and the contra-parallel aspect. I put the link uh, below as well for the uh, out-of-bound planet. 
If you haven't watched it yet, I think you put a great knowledge into that 50 minute video. So please listen to it. Don't forget to press like, subscribe and all those nice, th nice things. And even uh, you can share it with your friends also who are interested in astrology. Yeah. See you soon again with another video. Thank you, Tsveti. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, see you soon, hopefully. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.